Shares of CrowdStrike are diving about 20% in early morning trading on Wednesday in response to the Q3 2023 fiscal year 2023 results. What happened in this quarter that has Wall Street so upset? Here's everything you need to know in about 10 minutes. My name is Brian Feraldi. As of the time is recording, I am a shareholder of CrowdStrike, which is going to be about a $26 billion market cap if that early morning share price movement does continue to hold. So revenue for the quarter grew 53% to $581 million, exceeding Wall Street's estimate and management's own guidance. On the bottom line, $0.40 cents in adjusted earnings per share, yes, non-GAAP, that was up triple digits over the year-ago period, blasting past Wall Street's estimate and management's own guidance. So the headline numbers for the quarter were great. Customer base grew by 44% year over year. The company now has more than 21,000 customers on the platform, so that hyper growth does continue. And if you look at the adoption of the CrowdStrike modules, lots of pleasing results here. So the number of customers that have five plus modules grew 57% year over year, and those with six plus modules grew 62% year over year. So CrowdStrike is not only attracting new customers, it is upselling its existing customers to more and more modules. That is great news for investors. In terms of annualized recurring revenue, specifically subscription annualized recurring revenue, growth there was 54%. This was slightly, ever so slightly disappointing, and management had some news about this that I think is what's putting stock under so much pressure uh, today, but 54% growth in this metric is nothing to sneeze out. Let's take a closer look at the margin profile, which was mixed. Gross margin fell ever so slightly to 77.6%. Operating margin and net margin, though, both expanded nicely. These are all on a non-GAAP basis. The GAAP numbers are much worse because this company does pay a bunch of stock-based compensation. Free cash flow uh, was $174 million. That was up sharply over the year-ago period. Net income more than doubled on a non-GAAP or adjusted basis, and the balance sheet remains in great shape with $1.7 billion in net cash. From an operating leverage perspective, this is an important chart for investors to look at. Look at the difference in uh, spending on a percentage basis in each of these categories. So while sales and marketing, research and development, and general administration expenses continue to grow on a percentage of revenue basis, they are shrinking. That is leading to an outsized growth in operating income. So this is the power of operating leverage really starting to kick in, continuing to kick in as CrowdStrike continues to grow. Now this company is paying out a bunch in stock-based compensation for the quarter, coming in at $140 million. That was up substantially over the year-ago period. That is one big knock against this company. It does dole out a lot of stock-based compensation, so the company continues to pay its employees very, very well. On a dilution basis, though, the share count was only diluted by about 2.4% year over year, so that dilution rate to me is acceptable. I would love to see it continue to fall over time, but hey, that is the price of investing in companies like this. Now, getting on to management's commentary, they noted that Q3 net new annualized recurring revenue came in below expectations. Why? They likened this to the macroeconomic conditions and noted that they are seeing an added extra layer of required approvals and extending the time it took to close some deals. So some deals are taking longer to close than they were previously. And the company noted that this was particularly pronounced in their smaller uh, businesses. So the non-enterprise accounts saw a delay in purchasing. Management did try to stress that these delay these deals are delayed. They are not lost, but that is never uh, good news uh, for um, investors. In the enterprise uh, level, some companies are signing multi-year subscription uh, start dates, which pushes out their expenses, and that delays, again, CrowdStrike's ARR revenue recognition into future quarters. So they're basically just seeing a delay at the more price-sensitive uh, customers, and that is leading to slower, slightly slower growth than Wall Street was expecting. Um, Now, turning to their dollar-based net revenue retention rate, which was above Q3 of last year and consistent with quarter-over-quarter performance, that's about 128%, and their gross retention range Gross retention, so this does not include upselling, remains at 98%. World-class numbers across the board. And if you look at their dollar-based net revenue retention rate over time, their benchmark is 120%. They have consistently been above that number. 
for the last Q, uh, last couple of years. So the company is doing a great job at um, upselling its customers over time and retaining those that it has. Turning to guidance, this is when the story starts to get a little bit rocky. Revenue guidance for the upcoming quarter is growth of just 45%. You can see that the midpoint of this number is below what Wall Street was expecting, 47%. On an earnings per share basis, management is guiding for 45% growth to about 43 uh, cents per share, significantly above Wall Street's estimate. However, Wall Street is hyper-focused on the revenue, the light revenue guide for the upcoming quarter. Management did say that this is due to elongated sales cycle and that their net new ARR is expected to be about 10% down quarter over quarter. So the macro is causing weakness in the company's top line growth. This company remains a top line growth story, hence why shares are taking it on the chin uh, today. For the full year, management is expecting 53% revenue growth uh, versus 54% that Wall Street was uh, expecting. Um, on the earnings per share basis, management is expecting triple digit growth to about a buck 50, nicely ahead of Wall Street's estimate. So light on the top line, strong on the bottom line. These are, of course, adjusted uh, numbers is the story of uh, the, the day. And in, two, in terms of next year, next fiscal year, so fiscal year 2024, that is calendar year 2023. They expect that net ARR will be roughly flat to modestly uh, up. So that again is catching Wall Street by uh, by surprise, implying a low 30th percent ARR growth rate uh, for the year. So what should investors watch moving forward? First and foremost, keep an eye on that multi-product usage. We wanna see the upselling continue and the moat continuing to widen. Two, keep an eye on new customer growth. We want to see that number continue to explode higher. Three, keep an eye on net new ARR. This is a softening figure, so we want to see it remain robust and outperforming management's expectations. And fourth, watch free cash flow and free cash flow production. Overall, we think that the moat here is stable at worst, widening at best, given the multi-product usage and that the thesis for this stock remains on track despite what is happening with the share price today. We reran this company through our investing frameworks and it continues to score very, very well on both of our scores in from the high, my high quality business category and Brian Stoffel's anti-fragile uh, range. But what about valuation? Well, valuation remains high and I'm gonna get to that in just a little bit, but Brian and I did wanna let you know if you are interested in sharpening your analytical skills next year, we do offer a cohort-based course, a three-week-long course where we run through everything you need to know about reading and interpreting uh, financial uh, statements. Uh, the course kicks off on January 10th. This is cohort three, and we go through all three of the statements in detail with uh, lots of uh, with lectures, with homework, and with Q&A. The reviews for our course have been absolutely outstanding. If this interests you in any way, click the link in the video description to learn more about this uh, about this course. Okay, getting on to valuation. CrowdStrike is very much in the hyper growth stage of its, of its growth cycle. The profitability is starting to be there and the revenue growth still remains very strong. Um, now on an adjusted basis, on a non-GAAP basis, the company's income statement isn't fully optimized, but it's close enough that we can look at many of the company's valuation metrics to get an idea of how the company is being valued today. So the price to sales, price to gross profit, price to earnings on a forward basis, and a price to free cash flow basis. So let's take a look at some of those numbers right now. So on a price to sales uh, basis, currently trading at about 17 times, you can knock off 20% from that number, which gets us to around 13 or 14 times sales. You can see historically, that's towards the low end of the range, high in absolute terms, but towards the low end of its historic uh, growth uh, range. Now, on a price to gross profit basis, the company is doing about 1.4 billion in trailing 12 month uh, for, uh, gross uh, profit. Divide that by the market cap of 26 billion, and that gets us to about 13, 14 times, something like that. So again, these numbers are high, very high on an absolute uh, basis. How about the PE ratio on a forward basis? Currently trading at about 103 times next year's earnings estimates. Keep in mind that the earnings came in ahead of expectations, and then subtract 20% from this number, given what's happening to the share price today, that gets us in the 70-ish range, 70 times next year's uh, earnings uh, estimates. Again, high on an absolute basis, but uh, historically low uh, for the company. 
Finally, on a price to free cash flow basis, free cash flow just jumped, and then you could knock off 20% from this number, given the share price decline today. So that gets us in the price to free cash flow basis of about 40, 45, something along there. The company is not fully optimized for free cash flow, um, but so those numbers are semi meaningful uh, uh, to me. So high in absolute terms, but if this company can continue to grow its rap top line so rapidly, starting to become very attractively priced. Turning to estimates for the upcoming uh, fiscal years, let's take a look. So for this fiscal year, uh, Wall Street is expecting about $2.23 billion in revenue. For 2024, that's expected to jump to $3 billion in annual revenue, and for 2025, jumping to about $4 billion in revenue. So Wall Street very much expects this company's top line to continue to move uh, forward, continue to move forward uh, and rapidly, rapidly uh, grow. But that is the story uh, right now. In other news, does this, does the falling stock price affect this company negatively? Where is the company in its growth cycle? Um, I firmly believe that it is in this stage here. The company is fully self-funding, could is rapidly approaching the returning to capital, returning capital to shareholders. Uh, so a falling stock price is a little bit of a threat um, from a stock-based compensation uh, perspective, but this business is in no way in trouble with the fall Falling, uh, stock price. So what we have here is an expectations let down from a forward revenue guidance perspective, but the company is continuing to scale. The moat is continuing to widen. The growth rate on the top line remains very pleasing, but this is going to be a stock that this market environment hates uh, right now. Any disappointment on any any number is going to result in what we're seeing today, which is a huge decline uh, in, the, in the share price. However, this is a stock that I continue to hold and plan on holding for many years to come because I believe it's technology is very strong and the demand for cybersecurity technology will continue to grow likely for the next decade plus at a very pleasing rate. Hope you found this review to be useful. If so, please throw me a like and let me know in the comment section below what stocks you're interested in us covering their earnings in the future. See you in 90 days on this one. Brian, out.